Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. Address the consequences of the petrol price hikes, review the minimum wage, provide a workable roadmap to the CNG alternative, fix the country's refineries and pay lecturer salary arrears. These are some of the demands of the Nigeria Labour Congress and the failure of the government to meet these demands have led to warning strike with a major shutdown scheduled to take place at the end of this week. To avoid the major shutdown, the federal government held a meeting with the NLC yesterday, Monday. That meeting, however, reportedly ended without a concrete resolution to the union's demands. That was our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. And experts are seeking collaboration for improved e-payment systems. This will be our second hot topic on the program this morning. We'll also be taking a look at the major headlines on some national dailies on Off the Press with an analyst who will be joining us to analyze them. I am Maureen Menon going So good to have you join us this morning on The Breakfast. It's a lovely, lovely Tuesday morning and we'll go straight to our top trending. The first top trending this morning, the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Idowu Ohonwa, has inaugurated a 13-man committee to investigate the death of Nigerian singer Iloriolua Oladimeji Oloba, popularly known as Mobad. Mobad's father, grandmother, and other family members were present for the inauguration of the committee on Monday. The setting up of the committee comes amid outcry from his fans who allege that he might have been poisoned by the owners of the re record level he was signed to. The spokesperson of the Nigerian police force, Muiwa Adejobi, on Monday assured Nigerians that Mobad's alleged killers won't go unpunished. The 27-year-old died on 12 September as he was undergoing treatment for an infection. And from that very tragic story there, um, so many people are crying out and seeking for justice for this young man. We'll move to the second one. The federal government is planning two superhighways across the country through a public-private partnership scheme. Minister of Works Dave Omar, he disclosed this to the State House correspondents on Sunday after a meeting with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Abuja. He said that the highways will be from Abuja to Lagos and Port Harcourt to Lagos, adding that they will be provided with state-of-the-art facilities for the comfort of the traveling public. Superhighways are designed for travel at high speeds, having more than one lane for each direction of traffic and a safety strip dividing the two directions. The minister said that the government got commitments from stakeholders to make the project a success within a reasonable period of time. Omahi also disclosed that the president was briefed on the need to seek better appropriations for the funding of the road project to avoid unnecessary variations in cost and specifications. He said that the National Assembly will be carried along to see the necessity of providing enough fund to road projects that are beneficial to the people. He also said that due to inappropriate funding, he has asked the president to direct the termination of road projects that have taken more than 10 years without completion. The minister assured Nigerians that no project initiated by the past administration will be abandoned by the federal government. According to him, the Tinubu administration inherited 2,604 projects worth 14 trillion naira, covering 18,000 kilometers of roads, adding that a commitment was got for payment of 4 trillion out of this amount. The minister added that the government was also committed to using, you know, to use the reinforced concrete for road pavements across the country, stating that it is capable of withstanding heavy roads such as heavy vehicles with less deformation and seven four years without major repairs needed. He spoke of the merit of using local materials highlighting that eliminating imported items will stop contract variations in the country. On the structural defects on the third mainland bridge, Umar, he said that work had started and heavy vehicles 
had been stopped from plying it for now. Well, when coming to work on Monday, I was hopeful that the, 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 the part of the third mainland bridge which I go through was part of those that had received the palliative, but it's not. So I'm still very hopeful that by, because it, it's going to take place also next Sunday. So hopefully by next week, Monday, when I apply the third million bridge, wouldn't go through some of the things we've been going through in the past couple of months. And so we'll move to the third top trending. It's been in the news for a couple of days now. At least two persons are battling for their lives at a private hospital after a school turned residential building in the Ketu area of Lagos partially collapsed on Sunday. The building housing over 800 rooms with hundreds of residents known as Agoye Estate on Odunta Street, Ketu, first caved in on Saturday afternoon following hours of rainfall that greeted most parts of Lagos on Sunday afternoon as residents were still trying to salvage their belongings. The building crumbled again, destroying another structure inside the compound before collapsing completely. Well, I understand that there have been reports against that building even before this collapse. So I don't know why appropriate actions were not taken to avert this kind of tragedy. But there you have it, another building collapsed, this time housing more than 800 people. Picture that. Picture that. Doesn't make sense. But then two lives are already battling for, to survive from that tragedy. I hope they make it. While well, you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, it is the Tuesday edition. We call it the Technophile edition. We'll be back to take a look at Off the Press and see those headlines that made it to the front pages of some national dailies this morning. Stay with us. <music> 